Mingo, we're back live. Here we are in Hawaii, the state of clean energy, Ray Starling and me. Um, and today we're doing a special show as part of our uh, Neighbor Island series this month um, with uh, uh, Sharon Suzuki. She is the president of Maui Electric Company, Miko. And we're going to find out all about what's going on on Maui. And we're going to distinguish it from other islands because we're tracking around the state. Hi, Sharon. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Jay and Ray. Nice, nice to be on your show. Thank you for having me. Oh, sure. Well, uh, I'll track on some of the things we were talking about before the show began, and that is, um, can you give us, you're the, you're, the, you're the CEO, the president of uh, Maui Electric Company. How did you get there, and how can I get your job? <laughs> Work hard. <laughs> I actually have been with the utility. I started at Hawaiian Electric um, back working on the energy efficiency demand side management rebate program. That was a fun time to get that started. I was there for 12 years, uh, moved to Maui as the manager of customer service, uh, was moved into the renewable energy services department as manager. Mm -hmm. um, my predecessor, Ed Reinhardt, saw a vision for um, emphasis on renewable energy. Um, then four years ago, I was promoted to president of Maui Electric. What's it like? What's it I, like to be the, the president? That's, that's fabulous. I think it's exciting, challenging, and um, I'm sure have learned a lot. Um, we have, I mean, we serve three islands as Maui Electric, um, Maui, Molokai, and Lanai. And, you know, we have a great team here. Um, the kind of smallness of the Maui Electric utility gives us the opportunity to try new technologies, um, move um, relatively quickly, and um, connect with the community in um, a, a very nice way. How would you distinguish, <clears throat> I I really have to ask, I'm so curious, how, how would you distinguish, you know, uh, electrical generation, you, the way the utility works, the grid, customer base, all that, how would you distinguish that from, say, the other neighbor islands, from the big island? How are you different or the same? And for that matter, from Kauai, how are you different or the same? Well, I guess one of the um, key differences is that as one utility and we're, the islands are not interconnected, uh, we serve three small island grids. So, for example, the um, peak capacity on Oahu is about 1,200 megawatts. On Maui, 200. Molokai and Lanai are about five megawatts each, just mm -hmm. in comparison. Mm -hmm. So, you know, more rural communities um, and three separate islands. So logistically, sometimes it can be a challenge, but yes, it's always an opportunity, right? Yeah, what about your customer base? Uh, what, how many customers, ratepayers do you have in, in Maui County? So in Maui County, we have about 70,000 customers, um, about 3,000 on Molokai, 1700 on Lanai and the remainder on so most of the population on Maui. Mm -hmm. And how, how does that uh, compare with say the Big Island? Big Island has fewer I would imagine, yeah? No, actually I think they have a little more, maybe 80,000 mm. close to us, but they're, um, you know, the island is spread out so they have, you know, maybe different population areas and yet a long way to you know, transmit and distribute um, their energy. Before I turn you over to Ray, for he has some questions about, you know, vision and and uh, and exactly how you see the future. I'd like to ask you, uh, what what role does renewable? You know, you your background is in renewables over the past few years, and you must watch that very carefully. And I I wonder where where your percentage of renewables as a you know percentage of uh, total generation uh, is and and uh, how far advanced you are vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, the available technology and the way things are going on the Big Island um, and Oahu and, um, and Kauai. So I'll say that we've made a lot of progress over the last few years. Um, and since 2008, when we made that commitment through the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, Maui County was at 14% renewable energy source 
uh, or fourteen percent of our sales being sourced from renewable resources. Mm -hmm. um, as of the end of twenty fifteen, the last confirmed number was about thirty five percent, and we think that last year we achieved about the same percentage. So we've made quite a bit of progress by integrating. Uh, large uh, wind development, so we have a capacity of 72 megawatts of wind mm -hmm. and nearly 100 megawatts of solar, mainly rooftop solar, So and one um, solar farm, one megawatt on the Na'i. Mm -hmm. um, we also have some uh, small amount of hydro. Where is where's that Maui. located, Sharon? Um, in, La in the Lahaina area. It's a... Uh, um, Makila in the Lahaina, West Maui mountain area. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you have wind in Ulapalakua. I, I recall there was some issue recently where uh, uh, the, the, uh, the turbines, one of them or maybe more than one, got broken. Uh, are they back online yes. in Ulapalakua? Oh, yeah. They're back online except that one turbine, um, but they're um, selling us power. So they're back in operation. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's a very interesting facility. I was there at the opening of that. I guess you were too, but we didn't, we didn't know each other then. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, you had questions about, you know, the, the concept and the vision for Maui Electric. Well, I, um, I, I just want to say, uh, Sharon, I think you've done uh, a really good job, uh, especially getting the community uh, going behind what you're trying to do there. And, uh, you know, it's, it, I, I think you've got the uh, capacity to really move forward on, uh, on our clean energy goals. Uh, and I was wondering, sort of from, from you, uh, how do you view what Maui Electric is likely to look like in, let's say, two years, and then I'm going to ask you five years and ten years. So in two years, if you get to move things the way you want and the way the county is moving on clean energy. What what changes from what you've got right now do you think uh, you'll see um, in two years? So in two years, um, so we recently updated our long range energy plans with focus on the next five years. And we have set a very ambitious goal of reaching 100% renewable energy on Molokai by the year 2020. So mm. I okay. imagine that we will have had um, commitments for new resources um, on that island, and I see it as a combination of distributed rooftop uh, PV resources as well as um, potentially a new uh, centralized renewable resources coupled with some storage technology. And uh, running our generators um, um, as backup uh, using uh, biodiesel. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, good, that's great. Good. That's a nice package. Right? That's so good. to the extent that the other resources are not available, we can always turn them on, and we know that they can run on biodiesel because we've done the testing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it's still ambitious. I think the challenge. Um, to get 200% is balancing, maintaining reliable service to all of our customers on each of our islands while keeping costs of electricity affordable, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we could probably do it tomorrow or next year, but cost of, um, say, storage technologies and even biofuels is, has been um, high or at a premium. Mm -hmm. So hopefully technology is improving, uh, costs are coming down and biofuels will be more affordable. Um, so, so we need to find different ways to work with um, partners, right, to collaborate with the, well, you know, government, businesses, developers, the community, um, our customers to find ways to leverage maybe other sources of money so it's not coming um, directly from us as an investment with, you know, somehow getting back to the customer bills. So looking at grants, um, applying for grants, seeing what other organizations say on Molokai may be able to get access to to make sure it doesn't increase their bills. Yeah, Molokai is a really interesting um, sort of laboratory 
because uh, you've got you got a number of homes there that have rooftop solar and you're from what you said I gather you you're also uh, putting in some kind of community solar or or utility scale solar there and then you'll keep the existing generations with the for use with biofuel the existing uh, my recollection is the existing generators go way back and they've been running Molokai for a long time um, but but they are convertible or or they will work with uh, biofuel and therefore there's no reason not to use them uh, for backup anyway so uh, what I, what I, I guess what I'm coming to is I remember we've had some shows about energy costs energy prices in Molokai and and people in Molokai this is three four years ago were very concerned that the cost of um, you know um, the cost of energy from the utility was really high maybe the highest in the state and so my question is uh, how is the cost uh, of energy in Molokai doing now um, and has and has and will renewables uh, reduce that cost so cost for energy now fortunately oil prices are lower than um, the recent past and um, it hopefully stays lower not necessarily uh, or stays flat but um, renewable energy could depending how it's done right and how it's funded mm -hmm. um, could initially increase bills and that's what we show in our plans because we need to make investments but like I said, what we're trying to do is find ways to leverage other people's money, um, grant funding that maybe some of the organizations on Molokai may be able to qualify mm, for. Mm. We have also applied for grants for um, small-scale um, battery and PV as a part of the solution. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture Rural Communities uh, Group. So we, you know, we continue to look at ways um, to leverage other funding to improve the infrastructure there to be able to integrate more renewable energy and buy and batteries. Well you want, you know, batteries aren't cheap, and you want to buy them and make that 24 hours, yeah. Or use it in a way to support the grid and integrate more renewable energy. Mm -hmm. But there are different functions that the batteries can um, serve. It could help to regulate the fluctuations of variable renewable energy, like solar um, that's not available all the time, or potentially just shifting, right? Mm -hmm. Load shifting so that uh, you charge the battery with solar when it's available and discharge it uh, when we need it. Mm -hmm. Now, Sharon, uh, so we, oh, like one more thing. We did. Um, we were fortunate to have a battery provided to us through Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Um, we're still working with to develop the algorithms for that battery to um, respond quick enough to the fluctuations in the grid. Don't take a short break, Sharon, if you don't mind. Ray, if you don't mind, That's we'll fine. take one minute off to uh, you know do our standard break here. Uh, Sharon Suzuki, she's the president of Maui Electric Company, and we're talking about um, our series of uh, renewables uh, on the neighbor islands here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Hello and aloha. My name is Raya Salter and I am the host of Power of Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to figure out how we're going to work towards a clean and renewable energy future. We have exciting conversations with all kinds of stakeholders, everyone who needs to come together to talk about renewable energy, be they engineers, advocates, lawyers, utility executives, musicians or artists, to see how we can come together to make a renewable future. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Okay, we're back.
back with you, uh, Jay and I, and we're talking with Sharon Suzuki, who is the president of um, Maui Electric Company. And, uh, and we were talking about things happening on Molokai, and one of the questions that popped into my head was, uh, you know, one of the things that seems to be necessary to make a, a clean energy grid work well is to have um, smart meters. And I was wondering, is, is that something that you, that you would really need on Molokai since it's so small? Uh, could you get by without smart meters or are you planning to put them in place before you reach your, your goal of 100% uh, clean energy? We had plans to um, install meters at every location. I don't, um, the request at the commission um, was deferred, so we're looking at um, different ways to potentially get the communication and information uh, to and from our customers. So I think if we can do it in a cost-effective way, we'd like to have that type of technology to be able to have controllability of different resources out there on the grid. Um, I don't think it would prohibit us from getting to 100% though, so um, we're definitely looking at trying new technologies, um, implementing um, innovative solutions and different types of customer programs like time of use rates and uh, demand response where customers are more involved with um, us in terms of um, operating the grid and ensuring the reliable service to the whole island. So that's um, part of what we're looking at in terms of other solutions. And to the extent that we can prove it out on a small island grid, it may be, we may be able to um, showcase it and uh, transfer our, the knowledge gain to our other islands. Yeah, so yeah, the, I, that's a really important point. I'd like to pursue that for a minute. <clears throat> so, you know, we have statewide regulation, of course, which I guess applies to uh, Hawaiian Electric and its uh, subsidiaries all at the same time, at the same moment, the same regulation. Uh, and yet, you know, Molokai, for that matter, Lanai, can be test beds. Um, so when you say time of use, for example, you can be more nimble. You can do it in this laboratory environment of yours. And uh, as you said, you, you might be able to learn things and then export it back to Hawaiian Electric. But how does that work? Are, are you going to be ahead of other islands because of that laboratory environment, because of that nimbleness? Um, where are you now? Are you ahead now? Actually, um, Hawaii Island has the highest penetration of renewable energy. They're about 50% renewable uh, with geothermal, wind, solar, biomass, and hydro. Um, I think, you know, actually we do all islands um, in our Hawaiian Electric, Hawaii Electric Light and Maui Electric have a pilot uh, residential time of use rate that's available to customers. Um, potentially, we might want to see um, time of use rates on Molokai that encourage the use of electricity in the middle of the day mm -hmm. for uh, businesses also um, to be able to encourage them to help use the available PV energy um, that's currently on the grid. Um, so uh, to some degree, I think all of the islands in our service territories are moving at a similar rate. What we see are some of the um, high penetration issues sooner on a grid like Molokai and trying to address those um, issues with solutions to um, ensure, like I said earlier, reliability, um, affordability, and high penetration renewable energy. Can you, can you compare what's going on in Molokai with what's going on in Lanai? So Lanai is, um, we've been working very closely with Pulama Lanai um, to understand their plans for, you know, expansion and improvement and working with them on um, different renewable energy solutions. So, of course, I think it, it kind of depends more on the timing of their plans and then, of course, um, the different the availability of resources there. So similar to Molokai, I think we're looking at Solar, um, if it is wind, it would be to just be to source the on-island demand, um, storage, and also, you know, biofuels. Well, can we, uh, can we turn to uh, Maui and, and kind of yes. talk about them? Because it, it, that's a much bigger operation, and it's uh, 
it's going to take a lot, uh, perhaps a lot longer to get there. Do you, do you have a target date for uh, Maui to be 100%? Um, for sure, by 2045, if we can get there sooner, 2040-ish time frame. Okay. Um, so, and, so um, for, go ahead. Oh, so in addition to solar, more wind, um, storage, biofuels, we'll look at biomass and any other, potentially geothermal. You know, there was a developer looking at geothermal at one time, but, um, you know, we know there's a resource available. It just not just, but it would take someone to um, test and, you know, develop that resource, right, to make it available. So, yep. so what, uh, Maui, what would Maui look like in the next five years? What changes do you see uh, coming that you really would expect to, to arrive within the next five years? Okay, yes, so for Maui, we, we have made a commitment to retire our Kahului power plant, and that provides about 33 megawatts of um, firm capacity to the island. So we're looking to do a solicitation to replace um, that capacity um, through a request for proposal process. Um, so that we hope to complete, you know, in the next five years. So 2022 timeframe is um, what we're targeting. We also do need to upgrade our Central Maui transmission um, infrastructure because Kahului does provide additional support to the grid in terms of providing voltage support or some form of stability and reliability to the system. Mm -hmm. We also will be looking to acquire more renewable energy, uh, solar, wind, and other sources that are available through a separate request for proposal process. So. Uh, we look forward to, um, I guess, seeing what type of competitive pricing can come through that type of solicitation process. What, what role, Sharon, does uh, utility scale solar play in all of this? You know, I think there's been a tension on that issue in all the islands. Um, should we have rooftop? Uh, and, and maybe we have, we've taken all the low-hanging fruit in terms of customer base who can afford rooftop. Um, and that's why the in installers are having so much trouble, among other things. But um, what about the utilities' plans on putting in utility-scale solar or encouraging community solar uh, as opposed to single-family uh, rooftop solar? And how is it going on Maui? I think it's from uh, for solar or any type of renewable energy resource, we um, think it just needs to be priced right so that um, all customers benefit. And I think that's the benefit of um, centralized solar. We have um, contracted with a, a developer for two separate uh, solar farms, the first for Maui. Um, one is in South Maui and one is in uh, Lahaina. So that is a, those two solar farms, about 2.8 megawatts each, are expected to come online later this year. Um, the pricing was very good at the time, 11.06, which is uh, we, in our analysis, would result in lower cost to our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we do. We look to see if it's going to benefit customers before we enter into purchase power agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. Um, you know, rooftop solar, we want that to continue to be an option for our customers. Um, we want to make sure that it is also priced right so that uh, those who cannot afford to put in rooftop solar can, uh, won't be paying higher bills. So that's something that we're addressing at the commission um, in an active proceeding. Um, you mentioned community solar. I think we certainly are uh, looking to looking forward to implementing that uh, type of program because it gives customers who maybe cannot participate in rooftop solar install it on their roofs um, an option to be part of our renewable energy future. Mm -hmm. Sharon, uh, do you do you have any one, two, or three things that you could uh, tell us that you you need? that you don't have yet that uh, would, would be helpful in moving forward faster? Is, is there some missing piece, uh, or is it just a proce the process you have to go through? I'm, I'm, I'm I guess 
Go ahead. Couple things. I think we definitely um, need the community support, so we are working very actively to um, share information about our energy plans and get their input to um, build support and answer any questions or concerns that they may have. And the other is to, um, I hope that the request for proposal process can move forward quickly because that's the, I think, we believe is the best way to get a competitive price uh, for the resource that we need um, on the island. Mm. You know, uh, do, do you have uh, public support? Do you, you know, I mean, for example, different islands have different levels of public support. Different islands have different resistance on certain issues. I mean, uh, where where is the public on Maui? Are they in favor of everything you do? Are they giving you signals of one kind or another, or uh, resistance on one kind or another of things? I think that we've had um, support for the plants that we recently filed. They're quite um, aggressive in terms of getting to 100% renewables for Molokai uh, by 2020, for Lanai by 2030, and Maui 2040, 2045. So um, I think there's support for that. Um, we hope that uh, we can continue to get support. We've worked uh, very closely with Molokai because we needed to understand that um, us getting to 100% and using different types of innovative technologies would be something that they wouldn't mind. Um, so uh, when we went out to meet with them in September, we did get some confirmation that they were willing to, as long as we continue to work with them and yeah. talk to them about their energy uh, needs and uh, desires. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you really have to deal with um, the local uh, rate payers, especially in a place where, uh, like Molokai, where they, they can be... Mm, they can be very resisting, <laughs> they like. So it really pays to stay friendly with them. I wonder, <clears throat> I wonder one last thing, for me anyway, is do you have people going off the grid uh, in these remote areas in Maui? And I know it happens in neighbor islands more than it does here in Oahu. Um, but do you have people going off the grid and, and building solar facilities with batteries where they don't need you, want to, don't want to be connected? Uh, yes, we do. Is it, is it significant and, you know, that numbers? Is an oh, I, I don't have numbers, um, but I know that, um, you know, we have heard of some projects that um, are being done, and that is definitely a option for our customers. Mm -hmm. I think if customers have new loads that they want to interconnect, we're certainly interested in finding uh, different solutions or evaluating different options with them to to stay connected to us and to make sure that it's done in a way that's fair to everyone. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, Ray, I'm going to leave it to you to thank Sharon and to close the show. Okay. Well, Sharon, I really do appreciate your being with us today, and I'm really excited. I, I did not realize you, you really might cross the line in 2020. Uh, on Molokai, that'd be a great thing to have uh, uh, up on your wall, the big uh, uh, banner showing that you were the first to reach 100% here in Hawaii. And uh, so we're looking forward to hearing more. So we'd like to have you back sometime soon. Maybe next time you're on Oahu, you can come on in and uh, join us uh, up front and personal. Yeah, amen to that. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, I would look forward to that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha.